Hello everyone, my name is Celeste, and honestly, the wait for Missing Link news is endless and I feel what little patience I have dwindle away more and more every day. I like to think I'm a nice patient person, but gosh, we are in May. So what better way to spend this time waiting than talk about my favorite subject, Kingdom Hearts 4. I figured I may as well make a Worlds I want to see most in Kingdom Hearts 4 video before we get some actual confirmations. So here we go. These are my top 10 worlds I would like to see in Kingdom Hearts 4. I want to lay down my own personal rules I made for this list first. The biggest one being that I am not going to mention any worlds that are pretty much confirmed, like Quadratum, The, or even Star Wars. I know it's not technically confirmed, but it's basically confirmed, isn't it? Mentioning returning worlds is okay too. I refuse to make a separate list for returning worlds I'd like to see again because to be honest, I only tolerate most worlds in Kingdom Hearts and it would be an incredibly short list. Anyway, moving on, here are my top 10 worlds I'd like to see in Kingdom Hearts 4. Also, spoiler warning for Kingdom Hearts 3 and any Disney movies I list off. At number 10, we have Enchanted. Okay, look, I mostly want this world for the parallel between Giselle and Sora. Giselle is a fictional princess who enters the real world, which is a situation that is remarkably similar to Sora's. I think it could be fun, but I'm not sure how realistic it would be for this world to be in Kingdom Hearts 4, to be honest. But hey, Giselle could be a princess of heart, maybe, and I actually wouldn't be mad about Giselle breaking into song and dance for this one. I had to do a dramatic reading for Let It Go in the Kingdom Hearts 3 light novel. What's another dramatic reading? On to number 9, Pixie Hollow. This is technically a returning world. Pixie Hollow takes place in Neverland, but Neverland has many different parts. In Kingdom Hearts 1 and Chain of Memories, we spend our time on the pirate ship. In Days, we reached out a bit and actually touched grass. In Birth by Sleep, we actually visited other parts of Neverland, like Skull Rock and Peter Pan's Hideout. I feel like the next step naturally would be to go to Pixie Hollow. And why do I want this? Mostly because I am a massive Tinkerbell fan. I love how she looks, her bratty attitude, and I love fairies from the bottom of my heart. Give me a pint-sized Sora, hopefully in his own little pixie outfit. I want Terrence to be involved and confuse all the people who aren't in the know. In fact, I would be absolutely pleased with this world being the new Winnie the Pooh world. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh is iconic and symbolic of what Sora is going through in every game, but it's also run its course. It's a new saga, and as much as I would like to see this world be a combat world, I just feel like mini games would suit this world even better. Unfortunately, I don't think this is a world that Nomura would go for. I feel like Neverland, much like Winnie the Pooh, has run its course. The Tinkerbell movies are a prequel to Peter Pan. It takes place before Tinkerbell meets Peter at all, so this world would be better suited as a sleeping world, so probably not for Kingdom Hearts 4, but Dream Drop Distance 2? Number 8. Let's continue the conversation with worlds that I would like to see return, starting with the Underworld. Yeah, yeah, I remember what I said at the start of this video, but technically the Underworld isn't really confirmed. As far as we know, Donald and Goofy are just making a quick pit stop in Olympus, and we won't return there ever again after that. But after seeing how great Olympus looked in Kingdom Hearts 3, I would love to see an expanded underworld. I will admit, Olympus Colosseum was never my favorite world, especially in Kingdom Hearts 2, but that's been a running problem with movies that I really like. Wonderland, Olympus Colosseum, Agrabah, Neverland, and Kingdom Hearts 1. I'm somehow attracted to movies that would make for worlds I won't like, what can I say? Not you, Halloween Town. Never you, Halloween Town. But Olympus and Kingdom Hearts 3 changed my dislike for the world. I'm hoping that Kingdom Hearts 4 can change my mind about the Underworld too. I will also admit that a big reason I want to see the Underworld is because I just read The Sun and the Star and I'm on a Greek mythology kick now. Number 7, Wreck-It Ralph. I'm pretty optimistic that Wreck-It Ralph could make a return to the Kingdom Hearts universe. I mean, we got Ralph as a summon in Kingdom Hearts 3 after all. Also, I really do think Vanellope Von Schweetz is a possible shoe-in for a Princess of Heart. It would just be a shame to not bring this masterpiece of a film to HD Kingdom Hearts 4 life. This world is one of those worlds that could be good at being a hybrid minigame combat world, what with the potential of a racing minigame against Vanellope and a Fix-It Felix minigame. Number 6, The Caribbean. The Pirate's World was a mixed bag for some people. I've come to learn that people either loved it or hated it in Kingdom Hearts 3. I am in the group of people that loves the Caribbean. I love exploring the environments, all the collecting and grinding we had to do. I also love the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, so I actually understood what was going on the whole time. 
I would love them to bring back the Caribbean for Dead Men Tell No Tales or an original story with just Jack, Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Number 5. Princess and the Frog Originally, I wanted to add Tangled to this list, but then I realized I would much rather have the Princess and the Frog be added, and I imagine those worlds would play too similarly to add them both to the list. This world would likely focus more on the bayou, and that's probably what the world would be called. Imagine the swamp area in the Tangled world, but make it pretty and last for pretty much the entire world. I'm sure we'd spend some time watching Sora, Donald, and Goofy awkwardly watch the end of the movie unfold during the last few minutes, but for the most part, I imagine this world would take place solely in the bayou, and I'm not mad about that. Tiana would make for a great princess of heart, and I think I would really like the environments of this world a lot. It would be a candidate for my favorite world ever, to be honest. Number 4, Encanto. When I first watched this movie, I knew. It's popular, there are giant magical rooms and a big magical house. Bruno's room gives dull Cave of Wonder vibes. It's perfect. Also, I feel like Sora and Mirabelle have enough in common that he could help her a lot in this world. Mirabelle was rejected magical abilities, and Sora was rejected being a Keyblade Master. Sora also has a lot in common with Luisa, with always having the pressure of saving everybody fall on his shoulders. I could see Nomura creating a direct parallel between Luisa and Sora. Honestly, the biggest thing I would want to see from this world is the ending, where everyone is attempting to reach the candle before the house collapses. I want to see Sora be part of the mess, and despite how overpowered he is, see the game try to explain to us why he somehow wasn't able to airstep close enough to it in time. I would also like to see him help rebuild the house and smiling at Mirabelle with everyone else while she installs the doorknob. Now we're on to the big ones. Number 3, Inside Out. Most worlds in the Kingdom Hearts series are chosen based on the lessons Sora can learn, parallels Nomura can draw, and whether they fit a very specific theme. Kingdom Hearts 2 worlds usually feature characters having a self-discovery story. Kingdom Hearts 3 worlds touch on self-sacrifice and separating from someone you care about. I figure Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to have a similar formula where the worlds are going to match whatever lessons Sora needs to learn or be used as a tool to foreshadow the end of the game. To be honest, there are only a handful of worlds on this list that I actually feel will fit the theme that I predict Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to have, and Inside Out Worlds being the biggest example. This world is made for Sora, especially Sora post Kingdom Hearts 3. Name me a world that would be perfect for helping Sora come to terms with all those pent-up emotions he's been holding in since Kingdom Hearts 1. What is one of Sora's biggest character flaws? Toxic positivity. Joy and Sora suffer from some of the same issues, and I think Sora could learn a lot from a world like this and from sadness. He's been told since Kingdom Hearts 1 to always wear a smile. In Kingdom Hearts 2, we see how much he has taken this sentiment to heart by telling Riku to think positive whilst they are trapped in hell, only to have a moment of weakness where he says that the darkness is getting to him too. This moment is cut short by Riku falling over so we don't get to see Sora dive deeper into those emotions that he almost set free. When he fails his Mark of Mastery exam, he doesn't show disappointment but is genuinely happy for Riku, but we find out later that it really bothered him that he failed. While thinking positive isn't a bad thing inherently, we are beginning to see signs that this line of thinking is affecting Sora in negative ways. Sora bottles his emotions to a point where we even see him lash out in Olympus, where he tells Donald and Goofy that he can take it after the things Pete and Maleficent said clearly bothered him. A bigger example though? Rage form. Rage form can be many things. I don't want to get too theory brained here, but I wouldn't be totally shocked if one of the things anti form and rage form represent is his repressed and bottled emotions and trauma since the start of the series. He has every reason to doubt Riku at the start of Kingdom Hearts 2, but he chooses not to. What's Riku doing with the organization? Don't know, don't care, he's safe. If I don't think about the things Riku did to hurt me in the past, then those feelings don't exist and we can continue being best friends the way we always have. Surely my feelings about Riku's betrayal in Kingdom Hearts 1 hasn't manifested itself into some kind of nightmare. I'll stop there, but I'm just saying, Sora's own darkness arc is on the horizon and I feel like an inside out world would truly highlight some of Sora's inner struggles. I also think this world would be good for Riku too, but honestly, I've talked about this world enough and I could probably make a whole video about Riku and Sora being perfect for Inside Out. Anyway, on to number 2, Moana. 
Moana is, in my opinion, the biggest shoe-in for a Princess of Heart along with Vanellope. Tiana, Mirabelle, and Ventus being a Prince of Heart, just kidding, kind of, are all viable candidates, but I'm not as certain about them as I am about Moana. She has everything a Princess of Heart should have, and Moana is my favorite movie on this list. Imagine the realm of monsters and fighting Tamatoa. Imagine fighting a giant lava monster. The only issue I see with this world is that most of this movie takes place on a tiny raft in the open ocean. There isn't much room for combat in this world outside of the inevitable mini-boss of the pirate ship Wulakamakura. I gotta be honest though, I'm sure Namora could make it work. He's far more creative than I am after all. In fact, I would like to see Riku in this world specifically because I feel like he would relate the most to Moana out of any other character. If Nomura watched Frozen knowing that it would be perfect for Kingdom Hearts, then imagine how he felt when he watched Moana. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing Seriously, rewatch Moana, but pretend Riku is the main character. If Sora is Joy, Riku is Moana. Last but not least, the world I knew should be included in Kingdom Hearts from the moment I laid eyes on the trailer. Coco! I can't express to you enough how perfect of a Kingdom Hearts world this would be. The land of the dead is beautiful and I would love to explore it. Being a skeletal looking Sora is something that I feel would be fun to see too. Donald and Goofy on the other hand, uh... Like Wreck-It Ralph, I feel like Coco has hybrid world potential. It would be like Kingdom Hearts 2 Atlantica, but with combat and fun. Sora helping Miguel out at the talent contest so we could get into Ernesto de la Cruz's party would be great. And then you could go back to that stage later to do more fun rhythm games. Also, having Pepita join your party to absolutely rip the heartless boss of a certain not-so-good guy to shreds sounds both therapeutic and awesome. Also, can we please have a situation command involving a giant bell? Please and thank you. The music, the rhythm game potential, the spirit guides, the beautiful environment, the story, the best looking heartless the game has ever thought up, Sora's similarities to Miguel, Sora's hopefully hilarious or epic costume change. One of the two, either's fine. Sora awkwardly watching wholesome family moments off to the side with an oblivious smile on his face. You know how I said the bayou would be my favorite world? Scratch that! Land of the Dead would be my favorite world! Kingdom Hearts 4, please! And yeah, those are my top 10 worlds I'd like to see in Kingdom Hearts 4. There are clearly some I want more than others, but nonetheless, I'm happy to see any of these worlds show up in the future. I'm not really sure how to end this video. I suppose I could do some shameless self-promotion for my audiobooks. I've been reading through the Kingdom Hearts light novels, so check them out if that's something you're interested in. Anyways, I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye!